This has been a rough week for my fellow NPM warriors, my fellow package jockeys. Package. Jockey! If you're a fellow developer that is unable to figure out if a number is even or odd without installing a package, I've got a big warning. Because NPM has not had just one, not two, not three, because it was actually two, I lied. Two major incidents. Now picture one morning, you wake up, you've been procrastinating this entire week, and you decide to kick off a build pipeline and finally release what you promised you were gonna deliver a few days ago. You decide, you know what, this pipeline is taking forever, I'm gonna go get some coffee. And right after your scheduled morning coffee poop, you come back and you see the worst sight imaginable, your heart sinks, your build has failed. And of course you start panicking because stand-up is in 30 minutes and they're gonna ask you why the release you promised last week has not come out. So you start digging through the pipeline error logs and you find something really weird. You see that a package you didn't even know you were using is completely down and your pipeline can no longer fetch it. Well it looks like you ran into the first major NPM incident and luckily for you now you have an excuse for your stand-up. Of course this completely hypothetical situation that I know none of you guys have ever been in because you get your builds out on time as promised actually happened to thousands of developers. A project with 2.6 million weekly downloads completely disappeared from NPM. The project is called Stylus and it's a language that expands on CSS giving you features like variables, arrays, and other things within Node.js. And it's also, funny enough, a dependency for Angular version 12. And I already know my Tailwind warriors are saying what the hell is CSS, but hang with me. That means thousands of Angular builds just just failed and I'll let you be the judge of whether that's a good or bad thing but thousands of developers went to forums asking what the hell is going on things got so bad that the developer of stylus had to give an update turns out without any warning to the developers or the users of the package it was accidentally removed by the team at npm even though the project was well known and widely used it got flagged for being malicious to the confusion of the author and creator sending him into a somewhat panic he tried to reach out to the npm team and in the meantime there were workarounds discovered but still developer time was lost and everyone was confused why did this library get flagged for being malicious the author claimed there was no malicious code and the community Community backed him up so everyone was just confused finally someone had figured it out and the reason was really strange one of the maintainers assigned to stylus was caught trying to publish three malicious packages on npm these malicious packages were trying to commit a dependency confusion exploit now the way this exploit works is in large corporations there's usually two registries one private that's only accessible internally and the public registry which is something like npm and in the private registry, there's usually some packages that are only available to the company. They are never published or made accessible to the public. However, depending on how the private registry is set up, NPM might still reach out to the public registry to see if there are any updates to the package you're trying to install. For example, if you want to install React at work and you run npm install and your private registry only has React 15, npm will reach out to the public registry and see that React 19 is available and it'll pull that latest version instead of React 15. So it's kind of overriding the private registry and I think some of you can see the problem. Let's say a hacker figures out some private packages in a company that are not published to a public registry. They can then publish their own package under the same name, but an even higher version number. In that package, they can include malicious code or any kind of code that they want. And next time you run npm install for that package, it will reach out to that public registry, that malicious code, and pull that instead of from your private registry. Now, since Panya was clearly trying to make malicious packages, every package that he had worked on, which was around 12, and he was a maintainer of were wiped from npm including stylus luckily the github trust and safety team were made aware of the situation and they were able to get panya off of the package and restore it completely and fixing everyone's pipelines and in my opinion i think the situation was handled pretty well i would rather have my build pipeline break rather than pull in some malicious code and the github team acted fairly quick and restored the package once they realized that they were not an issue so it looks like another beautiful 
simple happy ending. Yeah, as you know by this channel, there are no happy endings. Can I get a little zoom in here? What does Tom mean by any chance his account was taken over last week by NPM phishing campaign? Well, what a great question you guys just asked, and that transitions me to the second exploit NPM has faced, and this one has hit multiple packages. Picture you're an NPM package maintainer, payless, thankless, girlfriendless, doing soul crushing work, and then you get this email. Free feet? Nope, not that email. Hi, we're reaching out to all users as part of our regular account maintenance. To ensure your account remains secure, please log in here to re-verify access to your email. And everything looks almost fully legit until you click the login here button and instead of being redirected to npmjs.com, you're redirected to npnjs.com. And you got catfished in the least fun way possible. There wasn't even a Nigerian prince on the other side. Sadly, this happened to projects like ESLint, Config Prettier, which has 33 million weekly downloads, and to another project called Is, which has 2.5 million weekly downloads. And what the hackers were able to do is plant a Windows-only DLL in some of these projects and a JavaScript malware loader inside of the Is project. The malware was able to execute a payload with the same privileges as a host process, meaning it had unrestricted file system and network access. It grabbed information like the operating system, the host name, the CPU details, and even the environment variables stored on the machine and sent it to a remote host. And removing it was a huge pain. It would overwrite its own index.js file. That means you couldn't just remove it from the node modules directory. You must fully reset your lock files for it to go away. And even worse for the is project owner, the hackers removed him as a maintainer from the project, so he had to ask the GitHub team to restore his privileges. Luckily for us, and probably unluckily for him, his privileges were restored, and he was able to patch the malicious code, and same thing with the other projects. Malicious versions seem to be taken down, and new patches seem to be released for each of these projects. But we owe a great thanks to these brave package maintainers, because they are fighting battles for us on a daily basis, with no thanks and very little pay. And maybe this is a lesson to all of us. Maybe we should think about what we install. Maybe we don't need so many packages. Nah, I'm just messing with you. That sounds like a lot of work. If you are a fellow package junkie like myself and you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.